A pleasant day to everyone. My name is Sean Kumansing, and this shall be my final project submission for my mastery class explaining my mastery journey timeline. For my overarching career goal, I would like to open up my own video game studio and produce my own games. So a little bit of a background about this goal is that I've been playing video games for my entire life. It has brought me vast amounts of joy and happiness and some of my most keen memories all revolve around the realm of video games. In that case, I would like to, I wanted to go into the field of video game design and programming and it was at that point where I finally nailed down the goal of opening up my own foundation or rather not opening but building my own foundation in the video game industry um, through doing this i would like to have my product that i create be an extension of myself an extension of my creativity as well as an extension of my imagination and hopefully i'll be able to produce games that rival that of some of the triple a titles that we have existing for my goal upon graduation i would like to improve my portfolio involve myself in more projects in order to seek employment in a game company. So my reasoning behind this is that throughout my time in full sale, my lecturers and I shall be creating my uh, portfolio and it shall showcase and implement uh, all of the experience I've gained throughout my time in full sale, all the skill sets that I've managed to acquire, and finally all the knowledge that I've gained um, in my time in full sale. So the reason for this is that why would I want to improve it if it's already been done throughout my time in full sale? So in your portfolio, you'll have all my projects I've done. However, after full sale, or even coming towards the end, I'll learn some new principles and some new facets of game design that if I implement it into projects that I've already completed, will improve the quality of it and making it of a much better standard. Thus, I would like to improve my portfolio and involve myself in some more projects I can get done, implementing again new facets of game design and any new principles, tricks and tips I might have picked up along the way. And in that sense, I'll be able to create a professional enough, professional portfolio, something of quality, something of standard, and be able to apply myself at a job interview at a prestigious game company in order to gain employment. So in order to achieve these goals, I've deconstructed the steps that I deem necessary in order to complete them in the most efficient and effective way possible. So for my first step, it'll be in a form of retrospective. It'll be a form of observation and analysis. I'll be taking a look at all the projects I've completed in full sale and see areas I can improve. So during this step, it'll do no action. It'll simply just be looking back at the projects I've completed, uh, understanding what I've done, what the premise, the premise of the projects were, um, the ideals I had while creating a project, the objectives I needed in order to get the project completed, and then at that point, I should be implementing some new tips, tricks, facets, principles, anything new that I've learned in order to improve them and make them of higher quality. For the second step, this is where I shall be taking the action in order to improve it. So this while I shall be going back into whatever program or platform uh, that I use to create these projects and see if I can improve them. I may make them a bit more user friendly, a bit more challenging, a bit more rewarding, or even just bring them up to a higher quality. Improve on maybe some um, negatives that I got from um, analysis from a review from the lecturer or professor. I'm just seeing where I can make them better. What instances can I use to make this a more positive and engaging experience? So for the second step, they shall be actually improving upon those projects. For my third step, I should be working on new projects and implementing novel ideas and creativity. If you may ask, my hand is here to block out the sun. So pretty much, I want to incorporate any new radical ideas or any radical features and mechanisms that I may have learned along the way in order to round out my skill set. Meaning that if at my time on Full Sail, I mainly worked on action-oriented platformer games, then after Full Sail, I can apply myself in more puzzle-oriented and more strategic-based platforms. Thus, that is my third step of working on new projects and making sure that my creativity and imagination are at the forefront of any work that I complete. For the fourth step in my mastery timeline, I shall create an astounding and professional portfolio that showcases all of my work as well as a synopsis of myself. So within this portfolio, I want to make it such as a thesis paper, a research paper as you might say, something that is of a PhD postgraduate level. 
So I want to make it as professional as I can possibly make it and make it to the caliber of some of the, or what I can do is I will do some research into some of the thesis and some of the portfolios made by former game directors and game developers so I can kind of get an idea of what kind of content that I shall require. Next, I shall create a synopsis of myself. And in this synopsis, I shall highlight some of my character traits, my talents. I'll even include a SWOT analysis, which shall highlight my strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And through doing this, I'll be able to cast a thorough and in-depth character of myself and what I can accomplish. For the fifth step, I shall be reaching out to companies in the gaming industry, sending them a portfolio, and applying for a position. So through this, I shall most likely utilize a platform of LinkedIn in order to look for professional game developers and directors and seeing if they have any open positions available, internships or any entry level positions coming out of a master's in the game design field. And then once I send them my portfolio, hopefully set up some interviews and then at that point, get employed in the gaming industry. For the sixth step, I should be working at that company for a few years and or transfer to other companies in order to get more exposure and experience. So the reason for this is that through going to other companies, I'll be able to pick up on what they're strong at, uh, what kind of um, games they emprise themselves with, pretty much what kind of games that they uh, are known for. For example, if a company is known for more strategic, more platformer games, or they use this coding platform, by me transferring to another company, I can pick up on their work tactics and gain more experience through that company, and it's only at that point where I shall build a more rounded skill set. For my seventh step, I shall be working on my own projects while at the company as an independent game developer and release these projects to close friends and social circles. So the reason why I say independent game developer is that I would not be able to release company um, company products to friends without being monetized or being released without the company's permission. So while I'll be undertaking any tasks, delegations and obligations um, that the company will ask of me on the side and in my free time, I'll be working on my own projects and be able to pretty much grow myself as a game developer. So step number eight is going to be a very um, it'd be a turning point in my life at that point. I'll be working on getting my own funding or a loan and it is at that point where I shall open my own video game studio. So finally, it'll be at that point when I finally reach close to the pinnacle of my mastery goal. So through this, I shall be either use my own funding that I may have gathered through working on the company, um, taking out a loan or a grant or any um, funding from the bank or any uh, financial institution. At that point, I should open up my own game studio, um, trademarked, copyright, um, make sure that all my intellectual property is in my name, and that's when I shall dive my first step into having something that is completely my own. So for step number nine, I'll either choose to be an independent company or a child slash subsidiary company for the business or one of the businesses that I work for. So as we know, as a small business owner, it'll be quite difficult to get your name out there, get your content, get your product out there. So um, if I choose to work under one of the companies I work for as a subsidiary, at that point, I'll have a big publisher. I'll be publishing games under their name. However, I'll mainly opt to be independent so I'll have all my product and all my intellectual property to myself. And last but not least, my 10th step, I should be producing my own games and grow my company to a triple A rating and quality. So at that point, I want to grow my company to, um, to be at the level and caliber of some of the biggest gaming um, legends out there. We have Sony, Microsoft, Epic Games, Activision, and so on. So at that point, I'll be working at my company for a few years and starting to gain some traction in the community. At that point, hopefully I'll be able to rival that of some of the hugest and most prolific and popular game companies of our time. So this is the end of my um, mastery timeline and I'll be utilizing all of Learn Through the Mastery class from Robert Green. I'd like to um, extend a special thanks and gratitude to my lecturer, Dr. Carrie Whaley, for all she have taught me, as well as um, Robert Green for all of the lessons and ideolo the ideologies that I've learned through his book. And is at this point where it's only up to me to make my mastery goal a reality.